All right, let's get started talking about the hard drive project, the project for this chapter. You will have had to have obviously passed all the uh, pre-checks, the pre-project skirmish in order to get to the choice, which is the first thing you see uh, in this section when you get here. So when you go to the hard drive presentation choices and we take a look at those, basically the way the choices work is you get a sized hard drive and a sized hard drive for uh, a specific computer. So option number one you can see is a 250 gig solid state and a one to two terabyte SATA hard disk drive traditional for your home. So you look at your home motherboard, you're gonna present that when you're doing the presentation saying what kind of hard drive connections it has, how many SATA connections, how many M.2 connections if it has any, that slide from your motherboard presentation on your home motherboard. Uh, and then you'll find two drives. Now, this time you're not from a specific hard drive manufacturer. You're not from Hitachi or Seagate or Western Digital because every hard drive manufacturer does not make solid states and traditional hard drives. So this time you're from a distributor, so you're not from Seagate, unless you do find two from one manufacturer, and then you can be. I'll, I'll say that's up to you. Uh, so in this case, if you use two different manufacturers, you need to introduce both of those companies. Hi, I'm from, or I'm, I'm from Pool Electronics, and uh, my first hard drive is from Seagate. Seagate's headquarters is here. Here's a picture of their headquarters. So you have to talk about both of the companies if you do two companies, and it's very hard not to do two companies, especially when you're looking at uh, the different things that we're looking for for our motherboard. So when we look at uh, a home motherboard, uh, you're looking for economy. So because it's a home motherboard, you're trying to find the least expensive thing in that category. So as we look at the 250 gig solid state, I should be looking at the least expensive 250 gig solid state that'll work for our machine. As I look at the one to two terabyte SATA, I should be looking for the least expensive one terabyte SATA. On the other end is the gamer choices. You make a gamer choice, you're looking, for instance, this is the first gamer on the list, a one terabyte solid state. Now we're looking for the highest performance. So if it's for a home motherboard, it can be TLC or QLC. If it's for a gamer motherboard, it must be MLC. And if it's a business motherboard, it has to be MLC or TLC, with really the emphasis on the drive to be MLC. We're looking for higher quality on, on the business and gamer ones. We're looking for better price <laughs> on the home motherboard. So you've got your motherboard, you've got the drives, and then you've got different sizes. So for instance, on this gamer one down here, you're going to be getting a two terabyte M.2 drive for your motherboard uh, and a five to eight terabyte SATA drive for your motherboard. So this is a, a good example of a high performance gamer that's gonna have an, uh, a really big M.2 drive for all their applications and games. And then he's gonna have a big drive to store all of his information on as well. So you get the idea. This is a 500 gig M.2 drive and a two to four terabyte uh, solid state. This one has two solid states. One's an M.2 and one's a solid state. Uh, that's the only one that falls in that category. So you're gonna first make your choice on uh, which presentation that you're going to have. After you've made your choice, the project itself is going to show up. And when you see it, the, this video will be up top up here. So you're going to have all of today and the next class period to work on this project. Presentations of the following class period. Use the weekend as needed to finish it up. You're going to introduce yourself. And you can see here, it doesn't say background of the company next. So you're gonna give a recap of your motherboard next that you're giving it for. So there's only one motherboard, either your gamer, or your homer, or your business motherboard, you're gonna recap the connections. And then you're gonna give a background for each company that you're presenting for. And like I said, really you need to because um, solid states are made primarily by memory manufacturers, not always, some of them are just solid state companies. Uh, and traditional hard drives are made by traditional hard drive companies. Some of them do make solid states. Uh, so then you're going to talk about the solid state that you brought us. You're going to say, hey, today I, I'm, pretty, I'm showing you for this home motherboard the best price 250 
uh, gigabyte solid state and the best priced uh, one to two terabyte traditional hard drive. And here's the hard drive I've got today. So you're gonna show us the hard drives. You're gonna talk about the size of the hard drive, the rotational speed, if it's a traditional hard drive, the access time or latency, depending on uh, if it's a traditional hard, hard drive, the read and write speed, that's on all the drives, what the transfer rate, expected transfer rate of that drive is, what the buffer is, if there is a buffer, the IOPS uh, for a solid state drive. You're gonna talk about whether it's SLC, MLC, TLC, you need to add or QLC and why that is important. If you're giving us the least expensive solid state and it's a QLC, it's a QLC drive, but it's the best performance for the money and that's why I'm bringing you a QLC drive today. Either the mean time before failure, or the annualized failure rate and the warranty. And those things should all pretty much be on uh, the new egg for any particular drive. So as I look at this particular M.2 drive, it is an NVMe. And by the way, it says it has to be PCI or NVMe. When we look at M.2s, do not use a SATA M.2 uh, for your drive because then it's just a SATA drive, right? So when I go down to, to the specifications, oh, I'm just on it on this one. Uh, we can see the form factor of the M.2 sp spot 2280 is one of them. Capacity is uh, 500 gigabytes. This one is VNAND MLC, and we talked about that in that one video, the virtual 3D NAND uh, MLC drive. It's on a PCI Express 3.0 channel. Uh, as far as the read and write speeds, they're right there. There's our se sequential read and write speeds. And then here's the IOPS, and I'm gonna ask you to explain what that means what do those input output performance numbers mean when you talk about it? So all those things should be on there. Uh, and then if we get down here, what kind of warranty you're gonna have to go to the, uh, if it did, this doesn't really have a warranty, that's not, uh, well, this might be the warranty, five years. Eh, I'd look at the product site for that. I wouldn't trust Newegg because frequently this is the Newegg warranty not the warranty from the manufacturer. This one doesn't have any kind of annualized failure rate or MTBF. Again, I would look at the manufacturer or Samsung's website to get the rest of those details. And you should be citing Newegg as appropriate and the specific website for that manufacturer because you need to be going there to see if any of these other details are there as well. As a note, no used or refurbished or white label drives. They should all be new purchases uh, for all your things. And obviously we have to have a cost with a link clicking to that cost and a works cited slide with actual MA re MLA references at the end. Down here, a little uh, what I already went over, the home choices should be cheap, cheap, cheap least expensive option that you can find, uh, which may be one that we don't actually ever wanna buy. It may be from an off-brand manufacturer that we're like, yeah, um, but you're looking for the least expensive for that home option. For the business choices, SSD should have a three-year warranty or more. Traditional hard drive should be at least 7,200 RPM with 128 meg of cash or more. And then in our gamer choices, solid state should have a five-year warranty. Traditional drive should have 7,200 and uh, 128, the same as that one. The only place you can use a 5,400 is a home choice. Uh, M.2 drives are required where directed. If the motherboard does not support M.2, present it anyway. And uh, obviously, you probably shouldn't have chosen a gamer one if your gamer doesn't support M.2. But if we're into the, the actual work and that's where you're at, then that's what you got to do. So that's it. You can spend the rest of today and the next class working on this presentation. I look forward to seeing them the class after that.